Hey, Thumpers and Super Friends, welcome to our first film review here at Hyper RPG. It's going to be emotional. We're going to talk about Logan, yeah, the brand new yeah, film yeah. that just came out. Hugh Jackman's final outing as the titular character. Yep. Uh, before we get into spoilers, we will do a little bit of a non-spoiler section. We're just going to give you our initial reactions to the movie, and then we will get into the the nitty gritty of the spoilers. Who are we? I'm you Adam Lavic. Join here with I'm Hector Navarro, <laughs> and I'm Augustine Rios. Yeah. And uh, guys, very excited for this movie. Yeah. After yeah. the Wolverine from 2013, I think a lot I of people liked it. you liked it. I liked parts of it. I was lukewarm about it. Lukewarm, lukewarm about, about it. About I think it. people Hands were cool. were yeah. possibly maybe a little bit apprehensive about James Mangold coming back yeah, yeah. and uh, oh, doing this final I installment. That, I think that everybody agreed that when Mangold was doing The Wolverine, mm -hmm. everybody agreed that the third act, you could see like studio interference. Yes. You could see like the studio getting nervous and yeah. going, this needs to be an X-Men movie. Yeah. Right. Let's throw in that. There's no action in this. We need a big robot monster, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Who can come close to that? Who haven't we used yet? Silver Samurai? Sure. Let's oh, do yeah. it. And it was like, I think everybody that watched the movie was like, the first, like it had a lot of promise yeah. and it felt compromised in certain totally. places. So, I was excited about Mangled coming back, mm -hmm. for sure. You were excited. I yeah. was I was just whatever about it. One, once the studio said rated R, and once they mm -hmm. were like, gotcha. this is going to be the unabashed Wolverine. Like, and once we're just Hugh, gonna Jackman, let loose. Hugh Jackman teased at Comic-Con or whatever, he was like, three words, old oh, man. Oh, Logan. Yeah. Everyone exactly. was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All that, all that stuff. Wow. Yeah. Oh, look at his man. Face. Look yeah. At, look at so so let's talk face. about a little bit like who put this movie together. So obviously James Mangold wrote the story. Uh -huh. The screenplay was written by James Mangold, Michael Green, and Scott Frank. Michael mm -hmm. Green wrote Green Lantern. Mm -hmm. He's also writing Green Lantern movie. Green Lantern movie. Oh. He's one of the screenwriters, and he's also working on Blade Runner twenty forty nine. So you know, there's there's some really good talent in this movie. Sure, but yeah. um, also, obviously, producing Simon Kinberg, the people who've worked on most of all, all the other X Men movies. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's talk about our initial reactions, <laughs> Hector. The movie ends. What are your thoughts? Non spoilers. Non spoiler. I really dug it. I really super dug it. This is, I said this a second ago, and Augustine liked it. This is his Revenant. This is Hugh Jackman's Revenant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is Absolutely. a great swan song, a great goodbye. Uh, uh, and it, it was emotional, and it made me think about my own mortality because this is the ending to a lot of different things. This is Patrick Stewart. This is Hugh Jackman. Uh, I mean, Patrick, they're all, and they're playing so old that it, you know, it made me think of where I was when I saw the first X Men movie in 2000, and I was like 13. So I've been right. watching these movies. These movies have been happening for a larger chunk of my life than than them not having been happening, mm -hmm. which is crazy. <laughs> like for more than half of my life, I've been seeing X-Men movies in theaters. Yeah. And my initial thought was that it was so well done, but it's not fun. It's sad. Mm -hmm. It's a brutal, there sad movie. There are some movie. fun moments. There's some great comedy. <laughs> There's yeah. some great moments, but it's like... I can't compare it to other X-Men movies. That's true. Because other X-Men movies are fun comic book superhero stuff. Mm -hmm. And this mm -hmm. is like a sad character piece. This is Unforgiven. Clint Eastwood's Unforgiven. Yeah. This is, you yeah, know, this yeah, is not yeah. something that you just throw on like like, hey, oh, I want to watch a fun movie. This is like <laughs> I got to be in the mood to watch Logan. This ain't no cloudy prepared. with a chance like, of meatballs. This is uh, <laughs> it's not. It's not even this ain't the Lego this movie. Is, yeah, this ain't no Lego movie. <laughs> no it is not. This ain't no Lego so Wolverine. So I thought it was uh I thought it was fantastic. I I don't know if I even have any like like nitpicks or anything about it. I honestly don't. Um uh, I like one thing I was thinking was uh, well we can talk about that in the spoilers we can talk about that in the spoilers essentially it's all good that's yeah. those are my thoughts go see it it's, yeah awesome. yeah yeah well we've talked about this ad nauseum <laughs> but the best nauseum the best nauseum uh, Hugh Jackman amazing actor I love him as as a person was never really my Wolverine mm -hmm. but that was mainly because of studio interference I believe not letting him be rated R. Sure. He, was, he, was, he felt really restrained. And when you restrain the beast, he doesn't come with his best. And does yeah. any of that have to do with the fact that he's not five foot three? And mm -hmm. like, you that he's what? like a handsome, tall actor, Hugh at, Jackman? At first, but he I, it was an issue. At okay. first, it, like when I first saw him, I was like, this dude's six five. Yeah. Wolverine <laughs> is my height. Wolverine is my height. Like, and yeah. he's 300 pounds because of his skeleton. So he's yeah. got to have some bulk on him, you know? Yeah. But once I got over that, once I realized how much passion Hugh Jackman had for this character... It's the same passion that I bring towards my fandom of this character. Sure. So seeing that he was putting his blood, sweat, and tears, and then seeing him so ripped in Wolverine 3, I was like, oh, my God, this guy's really, really doing it. So he won me over with his passion. This movie is the love letter to the Wolverine that we should have seen for the past mm -hmm. however many years. Yeah, like yeah. It, it, it's, it's like Wolverine... This is what you deserve the entire time. Yeah. We'll miss you, buddy. Oh my god. <laughs> can you imagine can you imagine if like if like an X-Men 2 
when those guys invaded the school yeah. that they went raided our level of violence with Wolverine. Oh section. my god! How crazy that would yeah, have been. Yeah, exactly. Like, like would it? Have, it would have been out of place in those movies. It would have been, yeah. been like, oh yeah. my god, he just did that. You're absolutely. Children right. are bleeding and, everywhere. And seeing but how this, you know, seeing how super the scope of superhero movies back then and when sure, it started, sure. I completely understand in the time frame that yes, it was probably not ready. We probably weren't ready for something like that. It ain't two thousand three anymore, baby. You know. Yeah. But this movie absolutely touched on everything that I wanted to touch on Wolverine. Mm -hmm. And then Hugh Jackman gave it 110%. The acting, well, we'll get into that later, but overall this movie is a must-see. If First of all, if you don't like Wolverine, you need to watch this. Mm. And if you love Wolverine, this you is need to watch for this. you. It's, <laughs> uh, yeah, just everybody just needs to watch this movie. Yeah, my initial reaction is a lot of emotion. Uh, I absolutely love this movie. I thought it was so beautifully done and so beautifully paced. I think we're really used to kind of superhero movies being bunch of cuts a bunch of cuts a bunch right, of cuts right, a bunch right. of jump cuts this movie really took its time it took deep breaths and it let you really have personal moments with the characters it built up the characters really really well over the course of the movie yeah. uh it really made us believe in the relationships between xavier logan uh, mm -hmm. uh laura and all the other characters right. um there are there are like really 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 minor nitpicky things sure. that i would say probably yeah. were like not yeah. as good but they're so minor that like it com the the movie itself outshines everything anything that anybody would have a flaw with absolutely um absolutely. yeah I, and i think uh the final thing that i would say just initial reaction is to me it's a film first mm -hmm. on the base on like yeah. the basic yeah. level it's not trying to be a superhero movie it's mm -hmm. really just trying to be a character it's not piece. trying to be a part of a cinematic universe exactly exactly and i think that right, kind of was right. to their benefit was the fact that they said look we're going to create a yeah. movie if it's the final send-off for this character for this actor let's create a movie that can exist in its own time and place that still is within the X-Men sure. cinematic universe, right. but really just focuses on Logan. I think that's right. why the title is so perfect for this movie. Right, right, right. Because it's not Wolverine and the X-Men. It's not X-Men Origins. It's, it's not even It's Logan. not even this old man Logan. No. It's, yeah, it's, it's Logan. It's yeah. its own thing. It's, exactly. If you're expecting the comic, you're not going to get it because it's a different story, but it's an amazing story. Exactly. Thank you, Deadpool, for being rated R and making as much <laughs> money as you did. Hell yeah. Right. Thank you, The Dark Knight, yeah. for proving that a comic book movie can be named not after the franchisable superhero name, mm -hmm. but like you can name it another thing right yeah. you can you can yeah, name right. a wolverine movie logan and people are still gonna go see it exactly. right you know you can name um i don't know they really haven't done it with any other superhero sure. i don't know but like you know sure. when that when the dark knight came out people were like it's, uh, how did the studio let a movie get made that didn't have the word batman, batman in, it? in it right because he's because he's the, it's perfect <laughs> yeah, yeah. for the character exactly. so yeah. logan perfect for the dark character. knight logan man of steel all that kind of all stuff sure yeah. all right yeah. so now it's time for spoilers Nitty -gritty, if you have not seen the movie yet pause please this. pause this put this as your favorite stop don't watch the spoilers because I uh, trust me, it's worth every moment to watch this movie, absorb it, enjoy it, digest it, yeah. and come back and join us for the spoiler review. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. without further ado, I think the first place we have to start with is the acting. Oh, I thought uh, you were gonna start somewhere else. All right. <laughs> no, let's start with the acting first. So good. Hugh Jackman. He dies. The hardcore porn, porn scene? Yeah, the hardcore <laughs> pornography that, that with Claude. The pornos, uh, okay. not the pornos. Not Very that one? inappropriate. No, uh, let's start. Let, we'll, 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 we'll get to we'll that. We'll get to that. Because yeah, that's a special that. moment. Acting. I like well, this. Let's, 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 let's go through, through the cast. cast. Yeah. First of all, Hugh Jackman. Holy hell. Like, yeah, absolutely. To me, to me, I think this was like his best portrayal oh. right? and the best acting he's ever done in the X-Men franchise. Mm -hmm. I think overall he's a phenomenal actor. Yeah. But I think as the character, this probably was the best because he had really no rope to kind of keep him tied down. Yeah. yeah. He could do yeah. anything and everything that he wanted to. And I think, again, because of the writing and because of the direction, we got to really see the, the inside workings of Logan mm -hmm. so much more. We got to see the humanity of the character, his relationship with the Professor mm -hmm. X. But I think, yeah, Hugh Jackman... Jeez, Obviously, he has to be kind of the standout in this movie because Tort he's the Tort titular character. But man, so I good. mean, the brutality of of the action sequences, the emotion, the emotional moments that he has with X twenty three, the emotional moments he has with Professor Xavier. I gotta it's say, incredible. it was so smart that they put Patrick Stewart in this film. Yeah, because not only was it a, a, a tether that tied the audience to the history of the X Men franchise, but I mm -hmm. think it must have helped their performances. I think so because think Patrick right. Stewart yeah. and Hugh Jackman yeah. must have been working together. You know, on the set on those days and thinking, dude, we've been doing this since 1999. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that adds another element to like Charles. You're like my father, Charles. Yeah, you know, yeah. and adds another element to like, even you know, though we know Patrick Stewart doesn't age. Yeah, like, <laughs> but they did such a good job with the makeup on both of their oh, ends that 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 emotion and those performances when he was taking care of of Charles it was so sad. Yeah. When you had that mo yes. moment where 
after Charles gets stabbed and he's lifting him, he's like, it wasn't me. It wasn't me, oh, Charles. Jesus like, Christ. Like, just hits you Ugh. right in the heart. Just hits Literally. you right in the gut. I, I, and I, to brutal. go back to your point where he was taking care of Xavier, you could tell that he was trying to mentally disconnect from the fact that his father figure mm -hmm. was dying. Like he has a he has a, a debilitating brain disease. Yeah. And he doesn't want to care about him, but deep down he really does care about this character. He really does yeah. care about Xavier. Yeah. And and you could tell that there's there's he's struggling with that, just like Wolverine struggles with everything. He yeah. he he struggles about the people he cares about because he doesn't want to get too close. Yes. Because it, you know, he's been hurt in the past before. And all that comes through and yeah. he didn't even have to say it. It's just the acting that there. Hugh Jackman does. It's so good. Both of their performances, uh the way that they interact interacted with uh, Laura was mm -hmm. fantastic, yeah. Patrick mm -hmm. Stewart and Hugh Jackman. But when they interacted with the family that came across, that mm -hmm. always like helping them, yeah, yeah, and yeah. when they're sitting around the kitchen table, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, the way that they were bouncing off of each other at that dinner scene, and the oh, way that, that Logan was, was helping, Hugh Jackman's character was helping the guy like fix the, like right. all of this sort of relationship building to get to the scene at the end for me that, that Hugh Jackman blew me away with his performance was, was his death scene, was when he was saying, you know, yeah. When he, yeah. when he, again, I said this before, when he turned to Lauren, he's like, don't be what they made you. And he, it just, I bought it. Mm -hmm. I bought mm -hmm. it when he went into Berserker Rage. Oh, yeah. I bought, more than yeah, even in absolutely. like other X Men movies where he gets mad because, yeah. because of the circumstances and the writing, like you're saying in the script, fantastic script up to that point, but also the way that they had been acting and connecting with each other as characters so that when right. Laura's in trouble, I immediately bought it that Hugh Jackman as Logan is going to go after her and kill a bunch of people and probably die. And mm -hmm. it was, it was mm -hmm. amazing. And when mm -hmm. he says, this is what it feels like at the end. Oh God. Yeah. Come yeah. on. Yeah. And to yeah. that, and exactly. Because especially that moment where he says, this is what it feels like. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people may not, cause I was talking to some people about, it, they may not have caught the fact that that's him basically oh, answering the question to what Patrick Stewart says earlier on in the movie, where he says, like, take right. a moment, breathe, enjoy this. Like, like this, this is this life. Is what it feels have a, like. Have a family. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, have a family. And, like, yeah. to finally have that moment at the end, I mean, but everything also that he delivers, it's so believable. But also the double meaning of he's dying. Exactly. He's like, oh, this is what this, this is feels what death like. Right. He's Absolutely. never dying. And he's also admitting, like, he's letting Laura in. She calls yeah. him daddy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right? Don't you suck. <laughs> she calls him daddy. Don't you break me like that. Oh, oh, the... That's what this is what it feels yeah. like. It works on so many levels. Yeah. There's so many things connected. It's such a heavy statement. Yeah. And then talking about, I mean, just touching on Patrick Stewart. This Fantastic. was this was a different yeah. Xavier. This was kind of more of what James McAvoy has done as a younger Xavier, where he's he's not he's so, more extreme. He's more extreme. Yeah. And I think having that R rating it. and yeah. allowing him to kind of cut loose a little bit. Yeah. So funny. And so and being great. this kind of ninety plus year old eccentric you know, professor who's Man dealing with a, with, a, with a brain disease, who's dealing with a lot of yeah. stuff. He's got a brain disease and, and he's the a weapon Westchester of mass destruction. Incident, yeah. That I was mean, his fault. Yeah. That was his fault. Normally I, it was somebody else's fault. Yeah. Normally. <laughs> this is the thing. <laughs> <Who are> you, <laughs> Normally it's <laughs> this guy's blaming? fault. <laughs> what but guy? To, but that guy? This guy. <laughs> but to make it Charles's fault. I mean, yeah. like, what did you, like, how, how did you react when they, uh, ne they basically revealed that well, it was, his disease killed, the, like, seven X-Men, probably right. Cyclops, right. Yeah. Jean Grey, the main Storm, yeah. Hank. Well, the thing that I that I love the most, that I appreciate so much about this movie and about the writing and the direction and the, the choices that they made was the fact that they didn't show it. Yeah. They told us. Yeah. Because I think the biggest thing is, I, I feel like with a lot of these movies, they feel like they always have to go back and show all the characters. Yeah. It's, it's back, more fan yeah. service than it really services the story itself. Right, yeah. So I love the fact that they didn't do that. And it's kind of up to us to interpret it however we want to. Yeah. And if, if they decide to go tell that story in another movie, which I hope they don't, but yeah. you know how it works. If they do end up wanting to do that story, it's open up. It's kind of is left I to do, to be done by whoever like, wants yeah. to do it. Yeah. This is done. The, w the way they the way they ended it, just the end scene. Yeah. The way it just cuts off in black screen. Yeah. I, that makes me feel like it was very final mm -hmm. yeah like i don't i don't even think James you don't want to see wants to go x23 and the kids no i don't i don't and you don't want to see a flashback to right Charles no, yeah Xavier. i don't yeah. want to see what Can happened you imagine before? how much of a bummer of a movie that would be if it's yeah. just right. like hey guys remember that really sad thing they talk <laughs> we're gonna make a here's the movie, movie about here's it. a <laughs> long movie about Xavier. here's halle berry dying yeah. here's yeah. Femica jensen dying like <laughs> james morrison dying fun. again we got kelsey Grammer back in the beast makeup but he's dead yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Brutal. No, that's that's not a movie I want to see. Uh, yeah, I, see at all. I, I think the and I think you know having these two like you were saying in the movie together to play this pair and then to have Daphne Keen come in as X twenty three, mm -hmm. it's really like the relationships and there's yeah. we get glimpses of Xavier that we don't really get to see that much. You know, he, yeah. we just see yeah. this someone who's really deteriorating at his core right, along right. with Wolverine, and it's right. it's just creates an interesting dynamic and it creates 
fun moments. They have like curse yeah. offset each other, which yeah. I think yeah. adds a little bit more levity to the movie. But I think it really just shows what kind of a state these characters are in. Absolutely. Absolutely. Look, can we talk about Laura Kinney for a second? Yeah, let's talk about her. <laughs> Daphne Keen. Daphne Keen Fernandez. Yep. Daphne Keen Fernandez. Yeah, are we are we gonna admit her? <laughs> yes. As the delegation. Here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. In comic books, X twenty three has has uh, traditionally been uh, depicted as being half Asian. She yeah. is the clone of Wolverine, who's Canadian, who's white. But her mother, uh, the scientist who birthed her uh, genetically, she was portrayed as an Asian character. Yeah. So when when Daphne Keen was cast, people were like, "Oh, it's not an Asian little girl. That's a bummer. That is a bummer. That sucks." However, here's another thing I got to mention. The movie stu- opens and Logan fights off all those dudes that are trying to jack his ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like cholo gangbanger yeah. dudes. And it was an, an amazing Four sequence. Mexican dudes. Four Mexican guys because they're in Mexico or Texas or whatever, Texas. And uh, <laughs> Logan kills all these guys. But when I'm watching it, I'm like, this is great. The violence is uh-huh. gnarly. Mm-hmm. I, I really wish that uh, these types of movies didn't only depict like cholo gangbanger type Mexicans. That yeah. would be cool. And then I was like, all right, well, let's watch the rest of the movie. Like yeah. I was bummed at that little depiction. Yeah. But then the balance for me came in. Laura Kinney's mother in this was a Mexican woman. The the facility she came from was in Mexico City. Mm -hmm. A lot of her kids, the ones that she's rattling off, Richter, Susana, all these, you know, like like all these different names. names. Uh Uh They're like, they speak Spanish, and some of them have accents, some of them don't, which doesn't make sense. But they're like Mexican kids. (laughs) And then Laura starts speaking Spanish. Yep. Wolverine says something. No, she she doesn't start speaking. She starts rambling rambling in Spanish. She's pissed. You can talk. (laughs) <laughs> shut up, shut and up. I was just yeah. like, oh my God, she's now an honorary Mexican. Yep. Like, and I was so, as a Mexican guy, yeah. I'm like, we have the Mexican delegation. <laughs> Representatives Hereby of the Mexican recruit, delegation. We recruit uh, X-23, Laura Kinney's now Mexican. <laughs> like, we don't get a lot. We don't she's get a lot. We now. have to We have to take what we can get. And hey. um, it All just right. made me happy because of that balance. Because of yeah. showing like. Dudes that were desperate and bad guys, cholo gangbangers, but then also this Mexican woman and these and Laura Kinney herself and these people that are like good people. So I just yeah, I like right. that balance. Yeah, and yeah. she was phenomenal in this mm-hmm. movie. She stole this movie. Yeah, Daphne Keene. Her, 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 her first her first and movie role. Daphne Keene. Her yeah. first movie role and James Mangold uh, or Patrick Stewart <sighs> tells a story of how James Mangold called Patrick Stewart into his office and he said, Hey, I want you to look at this audition tape. Mm-hmm. And it's Daphne Keene's and Patrick Stewart's watching and he's going, You you hired her, right? And he's like, Yeah. <laughs> she's of got course. the part of course so i mean she if yeah. she blew people away in the audition yeah. i mean she was she was incredible in the movie and i think that's a testament to not just her inc- amazing i don't know what her experience is like what her what her training is as an actor right. but whatever her training is or what maybe whatever natural talent she has yeah. with the direction of james mangle yes, plus yeah. the support of hugh jackman and patrick stewart these extremely well experienced actors who come from theater and all this mm-hmm. kind of stuff having that sort of a team around this newcomer I mean, she did an incredible job. The action yeah. sequences. I mean, oh. look at her. Look how fierce she looks. And yeah. that's not that necessarily doesn't even do it justice right there. It doesn't. And that's not necessarily an easy thing to really sell, especially yeah. being yeah. I, I think it's people will, people will assume that being that young, maybe as a as a male it's easier or you would think it's easier to sell, but as a female like she is fierce, she is powerful. Listen, she yeah. is in the nitty-gritty yeah. of Zach this movie. Zach Eubank just came back from watching the movie just now yeah. and he was like he was so like depressed because it's and, how we and, were and after we, we were. saw it. Yeah. The first time she pops her claws and she yells, mm-hmm. my thought was like, that's a little girl. Yeah. That's a little girl who's yelling yeah. for her life right now. Yeah. And she's getting pinned by like these gnarly dudes and like she has an arrow she's, through her chest. And she's yeah. killing them. And it's even sadder that she, you read this in a comic book and you're like, Yeah, okay, they're kids. Oh, right, okay, right. the X-Men are kids in yeah. danger. Sure, 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 yeah, yeah, got yeah. it. But to see actors perform it, <laughs> you know, it I think Real it adds life. another level. Yeah. And to hear her just Absolutely. her scream, her little like yeah. And you're like that's a that's a little girl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was like so sad. Yeah. Well, plus and even like the stunt perform because you know I'm obviously it's split up between stunt performers and this girl. Yeah. But the seamless way that it was integrated together, you couldn't even you tell. feel like it's Daphne Keen yeah. all the time you jumping could, on top of cars, tell. like l- leaping from one character to another. Yeah. Stabbing the hell out of people. I mean, it's it's she's so incredibly. And then when they popped movie. her feet claws, come on! That I, moment, I almost jumped out of my seat because yeah. so I was good. so giddy. I was apprehensive at first, mm-hmm. so and good. mainly because. Experience like most experience that I've and I've I have never had experience with kid actors, but mm-hmm. watching kids on screen, it's tough because some kids are really good and some kids aren't, and you know it's just kind of hit and miss with kids. Sure, and so and it's some directors and yeah, like, can yeah. Great, get great performances and some can't. Like it just right. it, it, it all kind of depends right. on on the circumstances. But Daphne King, she fucking rocked it That's the right. entire time. The first half of the movie, she's absolutely silent. I know. Yeah, she doesn't speak it's until all the last physical third. performance. Yeah, until and the last so third, and she's just. just 
She's got this focus in her eyes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> she's got that eyebrow game. She, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's got this focus in her eyes that mm-hmm. was I, I was like, OK, this is kind of, you know, this is cool. Yeah. When I saw her pop her claws, I was like, oh, I get it. And then when she started speaking Spanish, I was like, yeah. this is this is this is amazing. And at the end, when she said, dad, daddy. Oh, my yeah. God. I, that, I was oh. like tears. No, I can't. And I can't. I, and yeah. the no, intro- don't go into it because we're just the introduction to her to the action scene with her. You know, at the facility with Logan, and you know, you have Pierce coming in to try to no, try to capture. No, 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 no. And no. she comes in and she throws the head, and it rolls across <laughs> the sand. And I went, oh Holy boy, <laughs> there's about to be some shit happening here. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, sure yeah, enough, she tears yeah. through every single yeah. person. And everybody else was really great. Uh, Boyd Holbrook as Donald yeah. Pierce was was really cool and interesting. He He's a, a very interesting character. Southern accent kind yeah. of a thing. He had a mm-hmm. cool look, you mm-hmm. know, and and and. People have said when they're talking about this movie that it it suffers from not having well-developed villains Mm -hmm. and not having strong villains. And it's like, I disagree. What I was going to say earlier was, for a half a second while watching this, I was like, it would have been cool if Sabretooth was in this. It would have been cool if there was a villain that was more... I don't know, uh, important. I've been hearing that a lot online. To Logan, if this is his last movie. But at the same time... That not, that feeling went away because I even read that Mangold thought about using a. He did. He was cameo. in one of the drafts, yeah. Or yeah. maybe instead of X twenty four, it would have been Sabretooth that came in and sort right. of you know had to be taken out. Yeah. And I think that that takes away from the story. Yes. The story being about X twenty three. The story being about Laura uh, Kinney. The story being about Logan and and Patrick Stewart's character Charles. Like just trying to get away. Like I just felt like it would have taken away. And to me. Wolverine's best, biggest enemy is always like Weapon X. It's always mm-hmm. the, the thing that created him. He's yeah. his own worst enemy. The same dude. way that the, that's the, a the, manifestation. That, yes, that the Hulk's best enemy is the army. It, you know, it's not like the leader or the abomination. Right. It's like the United States Army. It's like he's a monster and he's being hunted. Right. Wolverine, to me at least, I think his his best adversary is is this program um, and the people in Weapon X. So you had Doctor Rice showing up, played by Richard E. Grant. Right. He did a good mm-hmm. job. Mm-hmm. Which again, um, it's another one of those characters, and I mean, that, I think that would be kind of my criticism of the movie is the villains. Sure. But again, I completely agree that the, the point of this movie was not about Doctor Rice. It wasn't about Donald mm-hmm. Pierce. Right. It was their mission and kind of what they were trying to do, which I think they explained perfectly well, mm-hmm. was to control all the mutants, mm-hmm. and then it was mm-hmm. coming after X twenty three, which is another failed experiment because yeah. they were all about X twenty four, which yeah. Hugh Jackman also played. Yeah. And again, the movie's called Logan. It's not called X. It's not called Wolverine. Yeah. And it's not called Weapon X. And it's not, and called, it's not, it's not, yeah. called, it's not Wolverine versus Magneto. Right, right, right. You know, this isn't Batman versus Superman. This isn't like uh, Captain America versus Red Skull. This yeah. movie's just called Logan. It's right, just exactly. a character piece. And Although I agree yeah. with you guys about this being Wolverine's movie, I do feel like, I w- for me personally, I was lacking in the villain department a little okay. bit. Mm-hmm. I feel like they could have ramped it up a little bit more and specifically... Sure. The way, like, the events leading up to Wolverine's death were just like a little, really? Like, that's that's, that's how, how you're going to take out the Wolverine? But see, I love that, though, because it's just right. sad as shit. Well, it is. Like, yeah. it's, it is. It's, it's not a big epic fight at the Statue of Liberty. It's not, you know, but I hear I you. Agree. I hear you. I agree. Yeah. But for me, as Justice, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of, like, an, 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 a more I epic get it. fight. Because we haven't really you know? gotten that many epic fights. Mm-hmm. So all exactly. of a sudden, we get to the movie where there's a bunch of epic, epic right. fights. So you're like, mm-hmm. man. And, like, let's see something even bigger. But at the same time, it couldn't have happened that way because sure. right. he was on his last legs and blah, blah, blah. Right, you know, like right. all this stuff. Mm-hmm. But when you break it down, this movie was really about Wolverine trying to connect with himself mm-hmm. like trying to deal with the stuff that he had needed to deal with and he'd yeah. been avoiding his whole life and they kind of manifest that into mm-hmm. the x24 project right yeah. you know true yeah so in, in some ways you can you can see it that way but uh other than that this movie was great yeah i mean talking about x24 really quick i mean it's it's a character it's not really a character that gets a lot of screen time yeah. i think that's what worked so well for me is the fact that like Honestly, when that character shows up, I went, ooh, this might kind of kill the movie for me that right, we're going right, down this right, route. Right. Mm-hmm. Hugh Jackman versus Hugh Jackman. Exactly. The rest really, the we're doing this. Thankfully, it didn't, though, because they used the character exactly where he needed to be and only when he needed to be. They didn't overuse the character. Only at the highest moments. And I moments. think that's what really s- yeah. made that movie work yep. Yep. so well Less for me. Less is more. Less is exactly. more. Exactly. Less is more. Uh, yeah. And then Stephen Merchant. Great supporting he was really piece great. to this movie. He was working with Logan, working with Professor X, and throughout the whole time, we learn... That basically he knows that Logan and it's all about Logan and Professor X. He mm-hmm. knows that at some point it's not gonna be about him They're anymore. Gonna He's gonna have yeah. to go his own way. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that he sacrifices himself to save them, I think yeah. shows so much about that character Caliban, who I actually don't really know. He was an X Men Apocalypse for a hot minute. 
Was but, he, but was he even named in X-Men Apocalypse? I think it's he like, was. Like, was. in that movie? Stephen Merchant was such a... I think you might be right. Stephen Merchant was so great that this was. is this is Caliban. You know, yeah. he, he did such a great job. and uh, I mean, he's tortured. Yeah. And as much as yeah. he knows that at the end of the day, Xavier and Logan could ditch him and go on their boat and sail the seas without him, yeah. he doesn't give up. He, he bas- does his yeah. best to not give exactly where these guys are at yeah. all times, yeah. which I think is so such a great way to write a character who really is nothing in terms of the movie universe we don't really know him i think i but think the performance Steven, in the writing like mm-hmm. yeah something yeah that's what i want to touch on i think Stephen merchant did a really good job of portraying a pathetic character that you could sympathize with yeah there you go. like the so character funny, was so just yeah. you're just like man this guy's so sad and and he's not standing up for himself and it kind of sucks like yeah. stop being so pathetic but at the same time we don't know what he's been through but mm-hmm. the way he portrays it it's just like okay i I, I feel you. Like, I, there's something yeah. about you that I like, and I, and I can kind of get into. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, yeah. let's wrap it up. I mean, uh, do we want to <laughs> rank this movie compared to like the rest of the movies? Is there anything else we want to touch on? Uh, I mean, final thoughts. I'll just say that the mu- movie is beautifully directed, beautifully shot, yeah. beautifully yeah. written. Yeah. Score, yeah. great score. Great score, Michael absolutely. Yeah, great score. Uh, I think in terms of the plot itself, they kept it very simple. Yep. And I think that really allowed the movie to just focus on the things that need to focus on, which is relationships. Mm-hmm. Uh, the final scene, I mean, for me, the big gut-wrenching scene for me was not only the not only the scene where he dies, but seeing the little snippets of the young mutant with the X-Men figurine. That no. was like, that was the that next kid. step of making me want to choke up. And then at the very, very end, you have Laura Kinney giving her monologue, and then she takes the cross and turns into an X. And I went, I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. The movie ended. Cameron turns to me and he goes, a plus baby. That and was, I was just like, I lost that. That was when my chest was heaving uncontrollably. Yeah. Yeah. I looked down at the theater and everybody's going like, <gasps> yep. Everybody Everyone. And all you hear is like everybody. <laughs> yes. See, this is why I wish this movie came out in 3D because the 3D glasses cover. <laughs> would have been just yeah. fogged up. But mine would have been fogged up to, because yeah. all the tears coming out of my <laughs> just eyeballs. It's really easy to wipe that. Oh, I'm, I'm fixing my 3D glasses. And then you we, we've had people hit us up on Twitter and they're like, is it okay if I admit that I cried a few yes, times? Of I'm like, course. fuck, if you didn't cry, what's yeah, wrong with you? <laughs> you? Like, I'm concerned. You should go see somebody. This, <laughs> this movie. Just, just that ending scene made. Yeah. Oh man, I'm already getting all emotional talking about it. <laughs> Ma- <laughs> it made me wish that Wolverine had been this way the whole time. Yeah. But it also makes me happy that we got this. Yeah. Uh, this movie is a very beautiful standalone piece for a character that deserves to be treated this way. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just glad that it happened, and I think that everybody should go and, and watch this movie. Absolutely. Yeah. Same. It's easily the best Wolverine movie. And I can't even compare it to other X-Men movies because they're totally different. Those things are fun comic book superhero things. Mm -hmm. And I think I might still enjoy Days of Future Past more. more. It's so different. And I'll throw on Days of Future Past just for – but like this thing is like – That's a fun movie. It's a fun – this is like a great, great film. Yeah. Yeah. In terms terms of like overall comic book based – Movies that are based on a combo character. Yeah, this is it's, up there. it's up there right yeah. next to the Dark Knight. 100%. I'm having a hard time figuring out which one I like more yeah. because yeah. this one is so different because it's so centralized. Mm-hmm. But it's 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 a beautiful film first, and I think that's what makes it work so Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Great this job. Film. Great All right, job well, that's gonna wrap it out for us. Guys, we want to know in the comments what you thought about this film, Logan. How did it impact you? What are some things that you caught that maybe we didn't catch? What were your overall feelings toward the final performance by Hugh Jackman, Patrick Stewart, all these amazing characters? And where do you want to see this franchise go? Do you want to see X-23? Do you want to see uh, potentially some of these characters come back ooh. for other movies? No. Let us know in the comments below. Make sure you guys subscribe right here, yeah. youtube.com slash hyperrpg. We've got a lot more stuff coming. Including and, uh, some comic book recommendations. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah absolutely. This, this stuff's going to come into play later. You love this movie? You've never read a comic book in your life? We got you covered. <laughs> read a goddamn comic book for once. <laughs> and uh, make sure you follow me on all social media at Adam Havoc. Hector, where can everybody find you? Find me on the internet at Hector is funny, Augustine. You can find me at El underscore Santo Taco. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next review. Whew.